The two cars you see in front of you here are for me the holy grail of Hot Wheels. Living in the UK it is always difficult to get Hot Wheels that you want and for that matter any other die cast uh, in most scales ultimately meaning that if you want to find something you have to look on the aftermarket on the internet. These two cars are particularly special to me. I grew up as a kid in the 1970s and the 1970 Rover P6 on the left that you see was a common sight on the roads. Obviously not this Group 2 version but the stock version of it. It has an air of importance and style Whilst the 1973 Volvo 142 GL was also a common sight on UK roads in the 70s. In those days when the average car on British roads was uh, pretty average to say the least, Volvos were seen a cut above the rest um, than they certainly were in terms of design, engineering, uh, safety. And uh, the British Rover was a cut above in terms of style. Just checking the artwork out. The Rover looks a little at odds on the Hot Wheels Boulevard Street. Nonetheless, it looks great. Whilst the Volvo, Volvo on the left. Again, what fantastic artwork. The other reason why these two cars are for me a holy grail in Hot Wheels is that Hot Wheels have done such an amazing job in the execution of these models. The Rover P6 here and also the Volvo was designed by Mark Jones and he's really got the proportions correct. I looked at it and I thought, well, there's no wing mirrors. And um, uh, looking on the internet, there is a photograph of one of the P6s that were made in real life. And uh, this particular one had no wing mirrors either. Of course, there's always many reviews about cars on the internet. And uh, I recall somebody mentioning about the British Leyland badge, which had been placed on the side of the door on this rover um, that's the blue rectangular square badge and um, saying that it had been placed there because um, they weren't hugely proud of it so yeah let's put it in a place where people are less likely to see British Leyland if you didn't know were a large manufacturing company uh, in the UK in the 1970s and they eventually uh, went into administration because of the poor quality of their cars, which were just boring, um, had a lack of investment, and so on and so forth. The exception to this was uh, Rover, uh, which um, was obviously owned by British Leyland at the time, um, but thankfully Rover managed to keep their uh, design flair going and of course is linked to Range Rover and Land Rover which have helped to generate a global luxury mark. And this Volvo, I've got one word for it and that is sick. Okay, I'm not a teenager but I think the word sick goes with this so well. So the car has been lowered, it's got some nice shiny alloy steel wheels, one of the two alloy or steel. They've taken the bumpers off to get a clean look. Nice black interior. And another reviewer mentioned, commented about the uh, size of the A-pillars at the front that they are too thick and apparently that Mark Jones had also brought it up as an issue um, and apparently Hot Wheels said well we can't change it uh, or it had to be like that 
Um, I don't know the story in detail, but um, yeah, looking at it, the A pillars on this are a little bit wide. If you're going to have a look at the uh, real car, the A pillars are quite slim. 